What comes to mind when someone asks you if you like abstract art? If you immediately think of the non-representational styles of abstract art, what many art historians refer to as non-objective abstraction, and that style of modern art does not appeal to you, I invite you to reconsider if you might actually like figurative abstraction. As you can see in this painting, which is signed in the lower left by J. Day, whose full name is Jerry Day, the subject of this painting, which is titled on the back simply as Orchard and dated 1950, is easily recognizable as an orchard. And since there appear to be no leaves on the trees in this orchard, the time of year is very likely the winter. However, due to the degree of abstraction of the subject of this painting, it clearly falls into the category of modern art often referred to as figurative abstraction, or alternatively by some historians as representational abstraction. This is a fundamentally different style than non-objective abstraction, wherein there is no possible way for anyone but the artist to know what the subject is. Now, one of the things I find interesting about figurative abstraction is that it always reminds me that all modern art movements, schools and styles, are abstract to some degree. Even the initial school of the modernist era, French Impressionism, has a certain degree of abstraction. While the subjects of French Impressionists were readily recognizable, thus their works are almost always classified as representational art, the subjective application of paint by an Impressionist painter satisfies the dictionary meaning of the word abstract, which is existing as an idea but not having a physical or concrete existence. So, for example, when Claude Monet painted his interpretation of this French harbor scene at sunset in 1872, which is clearly his subjective impression of this scene, isn't Monet starting the art world down a less concrete representational path toward abstraction, ultimately leading us to the more extreme degrees of abstraction to come 80 years later? Or well, if you prefer a more direct comparison of a French Impressionist painting, how about this one by another great French Impressionist painter, Claude Pissarro? Did Pissarro abandon his typically bright French Impressionist palette because he sought a more abstract interpretation of this orchard? Possibly. But let me share some additional details about this artist and painting so we can agree on where this painting falls in the spectrum of 20th century modern art. First, despite what you may have reasonably inferred because of this artist's first name, the other historical significance of this painting is that Jerry, Dale, Jerry Day is a female artist. I bet that's not what you initially thought. Jerry Day was born May 4, 1919 in Boston. She spent part of every year during her childhood in Maine, which is where she returned later in life and peacefully died on January 8, 2020. That's right, she was over 100 years old when she passed on to that great art gallery in the sky. Day attended Oberlin College in Ohio a college long known for their progressiveness and support of the otherwise disenfranchised. She graduated from Oberlin in 1940 and she later studied at Leiden University, which is the oldest institution of higher education in the Netherlands, and then at the Cranbrook Academy of Art in Michigan, one of America's leading graduate schools for architecture, art, and design. In short, Day was very well educated and very well prepared to be a professional artist. However, the story of this particular painting begins after Day received a fellowship during World War II at the Memorial, Phillips Memorial Art Gallery in Washington, D.C., a museum now referred to as the Phillips Collection. Now, if you don't know anything about the Phillips Collection, they claim they were the first modern art museum in America. So it's not at all surprising that they, like Oberlin College, 
were more progressive for their time in that they were actively seeking a young female modernist painter whose creativity they would support, thereby allowing her to thrive. Day obliged them. In fact, at one time, the Phillips held five of her paintings. But due to the deaccession process of the so-called lesser artists that all museums go through, the Phillips collection now only holds one of her paintings, a painting that is of an identical subject and style to the one I am sharing with you today. With regard to the provenance of this painting, it and a second day painting held in our personal collection were both purchased in a Washington DC auction sale that included other artworks that were deaccessioned by the Phillips collection in the mid 1990s. I have no idea what happened to the other two Jerry Day paintings that were once held by the Phillips, but I'm keeping my eye out for them. Because honestly, my favorite of the many 20th century modernist styles is figurative abstraction. Nevertheless, at least with regard to this former Phillips Collection Museum piece, a painting that I hope you can recognize was at the artistic crossroads of the American art scene as the avant-garde moved on to more fully embrace the many styles of non-objective abstraction it is yours to be had at an affordable price if you are at all interested in American mid-century figurative abstract art. <laughs>